looks fine. I'll look like a dork, but that's okay. <laughs> Ask my wife. All right, here we go. Now, nobody laugh at me, please. Okay. All right. So, so there is a theme going on here that most of this is terminal based, and we find it especially in the world of folks working in the dev world. Um, they're probably working on Windows, um, probably working on Mac, uh, maybe on Linux, but they probably are um, not real happy having to be in the command line all the time. And so, um, well, are there other alternatives? There's Docker Desktop. Has everybody, anybody tried Docker Desktop? Okay, Docker Desktop. I, I, I use Docker Desktop. SUSE used Docker Desktop a lot. Our development teams use Docker Desktop a lot. Is anyone aware that Docker changed their terms of service last year and that if you're a commercial entity and you've been using Docker Desktop, they can now send you a bill. They can audit you and all that kind of wild stuff. Um, Docker Desktop is open source. Okay, it is very, it's a commercial product, um, not open source. It works very nicely. It's got a few interesting limitations, but, but it's um, not an open source product. So this caused a real problem for, for um, SUSE. Um, one of the problems that Docker Desktop has is you're basically locked into the Kubernetes distribution that's in that version of Docker Desktop. So um, if, if whatever, th they, they tend to stay up with whatever's the latest thing, right? And that's fine. But we find, especially in the world of folks actually doing Kubernetes in production, most folks are not on the latest thing. They are going to be on things that are all over the place. They may have a cluster here that's running, you know, 1.18. may have another one over here running 1.21. They may even have one back here running 1.14 or something. I mean, it's depending on what apps, where they're at in the process, they, they will have various clusters set up to do various things. This makes Docker Desktop um, problematic in that if you're building, testing code that's going to run on that, you're going to have an issue um, um, of testing your stuff on whatever Docker Desktop wants you to run. Maybe when you actually go to put that in production on your 1.18 cluster, it doesn't work the same way because things change. I know back when SUSE was doing its own uh, Kubernetes distribution, we called it CASP, which was uh, Container as a Service Platform. Um, that was always a big deal, that whenever we moved Kubernetes distributions, things broke a lot. <laughs> and so that was, that was something we, we, we had already been experienced. So that was an issue with Docker Desktop. So just to kind of visit that. So one of the things we determined uh, after much soul searching, there were really no great apps out there that were open source desktop Kubernetes applications. There just wasn't anything that was open source. Now, there was one called Cube Solo. Anybody ever used Cube Solo? I never used it. I, I've known a few people that have, but I've not ever used it. This was a, apparently was a very good product. It, it, was, it, it had a lot of potential, and it was open source, but somewhere about 18 or so, um, the, the work on it stopped, and, and nobody's been touching it. So it, it wasn't keeping up. Um, so the, uh, who, whoever was maintaining it had stopped maintaining it, and it just kind of fell, fell, fell away. Um, but, but it had a lot of potential. It was a, it was a, good, it was a good product for... Uh, and, and aimed at the right thing. So when we started getting these emails, I, and I, I was actually thinking about it this morning. I, was going, I, I, I started in one of those emails that we got from Docker thing. If you're using this commercially, you're going to have to start paying us. Um, I, I've got one on my laptop somewhere. I just need to go find it. But um, we started getting all these emails inside of SUSE, and we're going, hmm, this is a problem for us because... We don't want to have to, we're an open source company, we don't want to use commercial tools like this. And so we decided to go build our own. And that's what we, that's what we did with Rancher Desktop. That was the, the kind of the whole idea behind this. Because we needed, we needed a tool for ourselves. 
Uh, we had the expertise to go off and build this. We had the p folks internally that could go do this. And they started to work um, back um, really toward the beginning of last year. Um, so back in 21, uh, by fall of last year, I think at uh, All Things Open in Raleigh, it was the first time that, that we were really out showing it a lot. Um, we were up to 0 0.6, I think, at the time. Um, and that would have been October of last year. Uh, we are now up to 1.4. So we've actually done a, first, a, a one dot release of this already. So it's very, very actively maintained. It's a very, a very active project inside of Rancher and Sousa. So uh, one of the things, if I, if I, if I wet your whistle toward Rancher Desktop today at all, and and you go, ah, this looks interesting. I might want to go try it. Do try to get on the Slack channel because they love input. They want to hear what you need. Uh, I know. Um, there are questions that pop up all the time. Can you support this or can you support that? The, the product is very flexible in the way that they've architected it, so they can plug things in. It's just a question of, you know, where is the, where, what's making the most noise? And what, what do folks actually need out of the product more than anything else? And that's where it's going. So if you are interested in the product and you go download it and start using it, get on the Slack channel and talk to the, to the developers. Let them know what, you're, what, what you need out of the product because they... They do want to hear about it. But Rancher Desktop is a completely open source Kubernetes experience for the desktop. And it's GUI based. It, 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 has, it has ties into the GUI and it has ties back into command line as well. So you can work in really either environment. And if the demo gods are with us, we'll take a look at both of them. What platforms does it run on? Well, it started off on Mac. That's the, the, the developers of the product we're almost all running Macs, and so that's where they actually started working at uh, with this product was on Mac OS. Um, and so there were some interesting problems there that they had to solve in the Mac world. Um, they also knew that there was a massive number of folks out there running this on, that would need this on Windows, and because Windows was a huge development plat platform for a lot of, for a lot of developers. Um, in fact, today I'm running this on Windows. Um, if I have time, I'll tell you the story of the Windows desk. Why would, why would a guy from SUSE bring a Windows laptop to a, a Linux conference? What an idiot, right? Well, yeah, that's neither here nor there, right? So, but that's, that's the, um, 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 and I'll tell you why I have a Windows laptop, if I have time. Anyway, so we do support Windows, and we also support Linux. Now, again, the whole idea behind Linux is like, well, why would you need to do this on Linux? You could run practically any Kubernetes distribution on Linux. It wouldn't matter, right? Well, one of the things we found is we started talking to developers. A lot of developers running on Linux, they wanted to be able to have an environment where they could go in and do their work, and if something ran off the rails or went into the weeds, they could just blow it away and start over. I mean, that's never happened to me before, but uh, I've heard it happen, you know. Um, and so that's, that's the reason why we, we sort of re-aimed this product on the Linux as well, because folks working in Kubernetes on, on a Linux laptop or a Linux desktop needed that same kind of experience that a Windows guy needs to be able to, to change this. So th that's the, uh, the, the other thing. If you're interested in the product, this is, oh, I'll click too fast, rancherdesktop.io. Is the, is the place to go. There's, I'm going to have a slide at the end that's got a whole bunch of resources on it, but that th th this one will come up twice. So you'll get you'll get two two peeks at this one. Um, so it's rancherdesktop.io, and you can go there and pull down to the installers and install it. On Mac, it's just basically, if you've ever installed anything on a Mac, you just kind of drag and drop, and it does its magic. It's just a regular Mac application, so it just does its thing. On And it's available on Intel, and on, M, on the M1 chips. So it's available in both architectures. On, on Windows, uh, it's just an MSI installer. Just install it like you would any other Windows application. And on Linux, it's a little bit different because we don't have an installer on Linux. We know there's lots of different ways that people install stuff on Linux, whether it's apt or RPMs or whatever it might be. So basically on the Linux, if you go out there, it, it basically has instructions on your flavor of Linux, how do I install this? If I've got Fedora, what do I do? If I've got Ubuntu, what do I do? If I have SUSE, what do I do? You know, it gives you some instructions on how to go 
and install Rancher desktop on those environments. Okay? I should have said before we start, if you have a question along the way, ask me questions. I fine, have fine with questions. Now, one of the things, I'm a sales engineer. I, I help uh, uh, Pat Geyer back here is one of my, my uh, account executives I work with. I work with about six uh, account executives, so I have a lot of folks I, I report to. Um, uh, uh, but but not a developer. I don't do development. So if you ask me deep CICD questions or uh, big development questions, I, I'm, I have my my dumb looks are for free. I mean, I could, I got those for you. Um, I'm not a developer. I don't do that. I don't do that kind of work anymore. I used to, but I, I have been away from it for a while. Um, but uh, I can I I know how this thing works in general. And so I can, and if you if you have a question that's off my chart, I'll just write it down. I'll get you an answer later. So I do that all the time, too. So um, one of the things that's a little different about this and the way you look at the, how, how this product was designed is that we didn't design it just as a single product. What we did was is we went out and we looked at various pieces of things that were available that we could pull in to make this work. So we didn't have to go and reinvent the wheel on everything. So cube control, we, we use cube control just the way you would on, with any Linux distribution. We take an extensive advantage of Helm. Um, in fact, the developer, the lead developer of this product is also the lead developer of Helm. His name is Matt Farina and, and he's, he's done both of them. So he knows them really well. Um, we, we also use nerdy control. If you're using, if you're using Container D, you actually have the, the choice when you install this to use whichever of the two, um, of, of the two container runtimes you want to use. If you want to use Docker, you'll tend to use the Docker CLI, which that's all comes out of Mobi. That's all that is part is open source, so that's fine. So we we do that with Docker D, but if you want to use Container D, you'll use Nerdy Control, and it, they're very similar. One of the things we found out when we started using Nerdy Control was we found it was only about half implemented. It wasn't quite there yet. Um, and so we have been doing a lot of work and pumping back work into Nerdy Control to make it be more full featured. So, so we've not only been working on the Rancher desktop piece of this, we've been actually had some, some engineers actually working to make Nerdy Control work better. So we're, we're, we're doing both parts of it. Now, on Mac and Linux, we take advantage of something called Lima. Uh, Lima is, is a, a way of actually spinning up a virtual machine so that you can, you can easily get, get this up and running uh, uh, in a nice containerized environment, in a, in, a, in a kind of a walled garden, as it were. Um, and again, since Mac OS underneath is just a, another form of Unix, it, that's not too hard. Now, Windows, Windows is problematic. Spinning up a virtual machine on Windows is difficult, but there's a way to get around this. It's called WSL. So we actually take advantage of WSL. So we require that we that if you're running this on Windows, you do run it with WSL, and that works pretty well. And in fact, that's the way I've got this thing, uh, today. Is I've got OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 running in WSL, and I've got a Rancher Desktop tied back into that. Okay. Design goals. Now, I'm not going to dig through this a lot. How's my time looking? Ah, not too bad. Okay. Um, basically, the idea is we want you to be able to choose the version of Kubernetes that you want. Um, we we, we want to leverage these upstream projects um, that, that are already there so we don't have to go in and reinvent that wheel. Uh, we want this to be completely open source. We're never going to present you a bill. You can't buy it. Pat... Pat cannot sell you this product. We don't have a we don't have a, a SKU for it. It is completely open source, completely free. Um, I've got a customer right now that wants to buy it, and we're trying to figure out how to sell it to them because they want support. We figured out a way. We're working we're working through that. We figured out a way to do it. It's a kind of a backward way, but it's not. I still have a SKU, so um, we we want to make upgrades seamless. In fact. My system upgraded yesterday. It was, I was on 1.3 and it went up to 1.41 yesterday. So it, it was a very easy process. It happened in this hotel, in fact, <laughs> yesterday afternoon. So 
uh, that, 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 that went on yesterday. We want to make installation easy. Now, I'm not going to walk through an installation today. Try it yourself. You'll see. It's not, this is not a, a daunting thing. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It doesn't do it automatically, but it basically tells you it's it's ready to do it, and you could you just confirm. Yeah, yeah, we don't tend to do that. <laughs> That'd be ugly. Yeah, if it if it always worked, it would be fine. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right, so. Somebody, somebody keep watch the chickens. I don't want to lose one here. So let's go see what we can do here if we get into some demo a little bit. So when I first installed this, I was like, okay, I got this running now. What the heck do I do? Um, so let me do this. Can you all see that at all or do I need to make it bigger? Let's, l let's see if that works. Now this is not, this is WSL, so it's, Let's see. Yeah, I probably do. I'm trying to think how do I do this on this guy? Oh, it's properties. That it, that's where it is. And then you go to font. There we go. Ah, how's that look? That better? A little, bit, a little better? Should I go a little more? One more? Go to 36. How's that look? Well, I don't look perfect, maybe. <laughs> better, anyway. Okay, all right. So, we're, 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 we're good. Okay, so. Uh, all right, let me clear that. And then, let's just do something. Yeah, if I could type. Ah, looks pretty good so far. So we've got a we've got we've we've got Kubernetes talking to us anyway. So let's go take a look at at, at the Rancher desktop. So again, we're tied back into WSL. This is running on Windows, right? So basically, when I install this, this is. This is where I kind of start at here. I'm running version 141. Uh, it does check for up updates automatically, so that is that is actually happening. Um, it actually lets me go and pick which WSL integration I want to be in. I only have one on my laptop, so where, where I'm actually tied into is my OpenSUSE Elite 15.3. Um, Kubernetes settings, this is where it gets very interesting. So right now, I'm running on 121.5, but I can go pick what version I want to run on. I got a few of them here. I can go all the way back to 16.7. So I can pick any version of this. Now, I am not going to change. Do you know why I'm not going to change? Anybody have an idea why I'm not going to change? There's two reasons. What's that? I, 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 I do I have an aversion to change. Yes, I do. That's, that is correct. Well, th the one reason I'm not going to change is I don't want to break my demo because, right, I, who knows what would happen, right, if I go do this. And so if I change, the other reason is if, if, the, if Kubernetes of that version is not on your laptop or on your machine, it has to go download it. We're on wireless here. I don't know how long that would take. It might take 20 minutes. It might take five minutes. I don't know, right? I, I, I know I was having Internet trouble the other day, and I changed versions, and, and it, took, it took a long time. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to demo that. That's that's too dangerous to demo. But that's that's basically what 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 how you do that there is you just change the the you just pick which new version of, of Kubernetes you want. If it's not on your machine, it'll pull it down for you. So you'll be off and running. You can do port forwarding. This is a fairly new feature, so that if you want to be able to uh, set up a, uh, a a specific port to be able to get to something. Um, you can do that. Um, that's easy enough to do. Uh, you have that ability to go in and actually um, do those kinds of things. Um, you could do image management. 
Um, and, and you can see here I've pulled down a, a number of different images in different ways to this. And if, again, if the, we'll, we'll probably get some more here in a minute if, if everything goes well. And then, of course, there's a, a troubleshooting. One of the other things that's fairly new in Rancher Desktop um, is this ability right here is I have a dashboard that I can get into. And this dashboard is actually a modification of the regular Rancher product, the Rancher Management Server. Um, if you've never seen the Ranch Management Server, you will in just a minute. But this is basically a smaller version of that that lets me go out and look at my distribute, look at my uh, uh, Rancher desktop here, and I can see what namespaces I've got created. I've got only one node, of course, because this is running on just running on this laptop. Um, I've got uh, uh, I've got the ability to have my apps and marketplaces out here. I've got the charts uh, available. That wasn't me ringing, was it? Good. I told I told Pat before I started. I said I go turn my phone off, or my wife will call me inevitably, right in the middle of this. Um, so I can go off here and I can look at the services that are available. So I've got a really nice I've got a really nice dashboard to be able to get out here and see actually what's going on, uh, without having to involve Rancher. So the very first time I installed this, I I got it installed and I go. Well, what the heck am I going to do with this thing? I'm not really a developer, so I'm not really developing stuff. So what can I do with it? Um, the very first thing I thought of is like, wait a minute. It's, it's, it's Kubernetes, right? Uh, I should be able to run Rancher on it. I should be able to get the Rancher management server and install it. And behold, you can do that, and I've done it. And, in fact, if the, again, if the demo gods are with us, we'll go take a look at it. So right here we go. Ah, it, it is still working. Very good. And I'm going to log in. In fact, I upgraded this guy just the other day. So this is the full Rancher management server actually running on Rancher Desktop. So I, I can go in here and I can do all kinds of fun and wonderful things. So I can do the things that I normally would do if I'm doing a Rancher demo. One of the things I've really found nice about this, again, if I'm carrying my Windows laptop with me and I want to demo Rancher, I've got Rancher running right here with me all the time. So I can actually show people Rancher anytime I want because I've, I've got it right here. So I'm going to go look at this cluster. Let's go take a look at something. Um, let's go look at apps. So I'll see the repositories I've got included here. So we with Rancher, we actually include a bunch of repositories. So installing applications on Rancher is really simple. You just basically go up here and you pick a charts that you want to install. So if you look at the stuff that actually comes with Rancher, um, these are all, the, these are all the, the bits and pieces that you can install into Kubernetes clusters. So if I want to install Istio, anybody ever try to install Istio by hand? Do you know Istio at all? So uh, network mesh kind of thing. It's used by a lot of, of, of uh, um, enterprise folks. Uh, our, our partners here from Crumware, you, got, you guys have done Istio. Istio installation on, on Rancher is very because it's just a Helm chart. Because all I have to do is go click that and go install. And it basically walks me through the process of installing. I'm not going to install Istio on my desktop. Not going to happen. But that's, a, that's the process that you would go through. Now, let's go grab something even more fun. Um, I'm going to go down here. I've got repositories. I'm going to go create a new repository and pull it in. I'm going to call it Rodeo. And I have got this url right there because i can't type and so it would be better for me just to cut and paste and i still might screw it up you know let's see if that works ah oh, looking good looking good okay so now i can go out here to my charts now i've got more things added i've got all these radio charts and now i've got a number of things um, one of the things, if you're interested in installing SQL Server, I can use this, this, this Helm chart to install SQL Server on my laptop. Now, think about this. I can install SQL Server running in a, a Linux container running on a Windows laptop. Wrap your head around that for a second. Okay? SQL Server running in a Linux container running on a Windows laptop. That, that to me, is bizarre. But anyway, that it, and it, works fine. it does work. It works very well, and it's very easy to do if you go grab this chart. And I'm I'm glad to glad to hand you this too. Let's go install something. So 
Uh, we'll go install Tetris. Tetris is fun. Okay, Tetris. There we go. And we'll install it. And it's going to start it up. There it goes. Waiting for pods to be ready. All right, demo gods. Shine on us now. There we go. Looks good. So it installed. So if I go out here to my services, it'll, I'll see that it, cre it created an ingress for me right there. I can go click that, and there's Tetris. Off and running. So that's all I needed to do. Easy peasy. So, and again, how does this translate into what you're doing? Well, you may be developing apps like this and be able to go and install them. Uh, have your own um, ha you have your own registries that you set up and pull in to your to your to your uh, to your desktop. You can do that absolutely, um, but that's that that's the whole idea behind that. So I'll go ahead and kill that. But but then I can go out here and look and I can see um, storage here. What storage classes do I have? Well, the only thing I've got is local path storage. But, but what if I want to install some other kind of storage to work with this? Well, I could do that. I've even thought about doing this. What you could wind up doing is in WSL, you could establish a, 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 like a folder that you would export via NFS. And then I could use the NFS client to go back and pull this back into Rancher or back into, in, into Rancher Desktop as a, as a supported uh, storage uh, uh, service. So that would work. I haven't done it, but I, you know, I have no reason to believe it wouldn't work. So that gives you the idea. But this is, this is actually the Rancher Management Server. If you're interested in more about Rancher Management Server and what it might be able to do for you, this is where you need to talk to Pat because Pat can tell you all about it, and we can get you fixed up if you need a demo of it or anything. We can get that set up for you. But we've got lots of customers that are using uh, Rancher Desktop or R Rancher Management Server, not necessarily just Rancher Desktop. So we've got both ways to go there. How am I doing time-wise? 208, not too bad. I think I'm supposed to go five more minutes and then be done. So um, let's go back to what should I do here? I'm feeling kind of frisky here. Let's try one more thing. If the demo gods are with us, we will proceed here. So let's go. I'm going to do something with nerdy control here. Um, and I don't want to type this because I will mess it up for sure. Uh, where did I go? And I know I had a build. There we are. So let's do before I do that. Let's do one more. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this, and we'll stick something else out here. We'll say self. Twenty twenty two. And now let me go, go grab that command, and we'll use nerdy control to actually build this image. There we go. So we'll go and do that build, and it did that. And then we should be able to go, and we can just issue a cube control command, and I've got one here, so I don't have to type it. And there it goes. And we should have that. And, and again, if I go back to my, um, I, I will, if I go back over here to um, my workloads, I should be able to see that. It should be a pod. There it is. Hello world. There we go. And if I go back over here to my friend, I should be able to do a port forward. And I think I've got one here. There we go. So I'll forward that port. And then if I go out here and just hit, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, 127.0.0.1. Oh, no, there, I'd already done it before. There, hey, we just, we, we, we build an image, we put it on the Kubernetes, and we forward the port out, and now we're talking to it. So 
that kind of gives you an idea of what you can actually do when you're doing development work with Rancher Desktop. Now, I promised you that I was going to give you some resources. And so let's go back to the let's go back to the slideware for a second here. There we go. There's my resources. Let's talk about what I've got up there that you that you might be interested in. So, um, so SUSACON was last week. It was this week. And again, as I said before when I started, I'm done with it, virtual conferences. But there is a gobs of content out there if you want to go take a look at it. So I would urge you to go take a look at some of the stuff that, that's out there. Um, there is a tutorial out there on building container images with Rancher Desktop. It's tutorial 1301. Uh, I know the lady who did this. She's a very smart lady. And uh, in fact, she's emailed me with this demo. So in fact, uh, so I, I urge you to go take a look at that. Yuki is the, it was the uh, um, presenter of that. Um, there is Rancher Desktop and VS Code integration uh, session that was done out there. Farina actually did this one. So that's demo session 1349. So if you want to see more from Matt Farina, who's the lead developer on this project, then I urge you to go out there and take a look at that. Um, there was a technology keynote that was done, and they actually did a number of Rancher Desktop demos in the middle of that. So you could get a better idea of different things you could do. And they also did VS Code integration in that demo as well. Also, there's tutorial 1307 and 1308. Some guy named Dwayne Sims put those out there. And one of them is about how would I pull uh, a, and put a real certificate into my Rancher server. If I'm actually using Rancher Management Server, how do I install real certificates into that? Because basically, I shot my foot off and had to go fix things because I, I got myself all messed up. And I, 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 I did a session on that at, for SUSECON on how you actually do, uh, do real certificates in Rancher. Session 1308 is how do I, dis how do I uh, deploy SQL Server? And using that same uh, Helm chart that we talked about up there. So that, those two sessions are there as well. The next thing there, uh, this guy right here, this YouTube video, that YouTube video there is Matt Farina doing, uh, uh, I believe it was last summer, talking all about Rancher Desktop. And so he did a, he does a really in-depth, some of the slides, I, in fact, I got, this, I got this slide deck from Matt, and he goes through and much better than I could ever do it. Um, but I'd urge you to take a look at Matt's. And again, rancherdesktop.io is where you would go and pull down Rancher Desktop if you want to get it. So I urge you to go grab it. It is free, totally open source. Pat can't sell it to you if he, even if you wanted to. Okay? There we are. And then I got some other junk in here about Rancher. Does anybody know anything more about Rancher? How are we doing time? Five minutes? So Rancher itself is this really nice management tool for Kubernetes. Um, and so um, it, all of these things that you see here are supported in Rancher. So I can actually go, everything in the green column, if you buy support on Rancher from SUSE, everything in the green column is, has, we have an SLA on. So we will fully support you. So if you're wanting to use Istio with Kubernetes, bang. We can go do that. If you're if you're using um, uh, if if you want to use uh, uh, what well, let me pick something else out here that'd be good. If you're using uh, flannel, let's say for your networking interface, we take a, we take an SLA on that. Everything that's in the orange column in this column right here, we work with Ran Rancher has a bunch of partners that we work with, and these things are integrated into Rancher, but we don't necessarily take an SLA on them. We make sure that they install and they work but if you find some esoteric little odd thing down in you know deep down in the bowels of I'll pick something out there uh, let's say uh, aqua you're using aqua and you find some little thing we'll work with the aqua team to get you an answer but you, you may have to buy support from the aqua folks to, to, to actually deal with that 
But that's the way, that's a, these are all the pieces that are actually uh, installed and can be easily installed with Rancher. So that gives you kind of an idea. Um, we have another product called Harvester. So have you ever heard of Harvester at all? This, this is a product that allows you to run virtual machines on a Kubernetes cluster. It's like, Kuber, virtual machines on a Kubernetes cluster? Why would you want to do that? Well, if I'm running on the edge, if I'm, if I'm again, if I'm out in a locomotive or if I'm uh, in the back of a store somewhere, I may have everything ported to a container. I may have everything containerized except maybe one or two things. I've got the, all this stuff containerized, but I've got this one application that I, that's going to be hard to containerize. And these are under virtual machine. But I don't want to have to stand up a separate infrastructure for that. I'd like to be able to have one infrastructure that I run my containers on and that odd virtual machine I may need to run to complete my application. That's what Harvester is all about. So basically it takes advantage of all the good stuff you get out of Kubernetes to be able to run virtual machines just in the same way that you run containers. So that is a product that we have. Um, then storage. Um, we also have a product called Longhorn. Longhorn is a way of, of, of doing a hyper-converged storage project with, with, the, with your Kubernetes cluster. So um, we, we actually have three different Kubernetes distributions that we support um, from, from Rancher um, and SUSE. One is RKE. We have something called RKE2, which is really RKE government. It's a, it's a, a, a highly uh, secure, securitized version of Kubernetes. And then we have K3S, which is the lightweight version that you would typically use on the edge kind of applications. Longhorn will work with those, those, those Kubernetes uh, distributions, also works with AKS, EKS, GKE, those kind of things as well. So if you wanted to set up something that looked like a hyper-converged storage with that, that's where Longhorn comes in. And with that, I'm done. Questions? Tomatoes, rotten, rotten fruit. Yes, sir. How would Terraform interact with Rancher? Live side by side. Um, you can you can certainly deploy things via Terraform. Uh, that's no problem. I've got customers doing that right now, and and once you deploy them with with Terraform, then you can manage them with with Rancher. Yeah, that's it's it's basically folks are actually deploying. Uh, RKE clusters or RKE2 clusters with Terraform, that works just fine. Or they're they're using Terraform to deploy their uh, AKS clusters or uh, EKS clusters, that works fine. And then you could just pull Rancher in behind it to to manage it. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Other, other questions? Either I bored you silly or something. I don't know. Yes, sir. Oh, that's cool. That's good. Yes, sir. No, I was running out of WSL. Nope. <laughs> nope, it just, it just laces itself right into it. Very easy. I'm very impressed with the with the Rancher desktop team. They they've done a marvelous job. I, I I've not tried it on a Mac. I've never I don't have a Mac I can rent it on, so I have not seen it rent on a Mac. Uh, I've got an old Mac at home, but I'm not sure I, it may be too old um, to to install it. I probably should try it someday just to see if it would work or not. Um, I have seen it running on Linux. I I again um, I'm I'm more I'm more interested in the Windows version. That's the way it goes for me. Yeah, so you're you're basically you're basically interacting from from Windows with WSL, or if you're running on Linux or on um, on Mac, it's actually spinning up a virtual machine underneath to to run it on. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, see that that's that's that was part of that design the the the, the design goals they were talking about because you could you could easily do it on Linux just natively, right? There would be no problem. But the problem the problem comes in is like if let's say I wanted to change Kubernetes version, I got to rip out the old one and put in a new one. The thing that's nice about doing it in a virtual machine is that if I need to if I need to reset my configuration, I just hit reset and boom, it's all gone and I start over again. So I just blow away the virtual machine, I build another one. So you, so you, it it's it was just part of the design goal. They they decided to cause they thought about that. <laughs> that was part of the part of the uh part of the process. Other questions? Yeah, gra go grab some tchotchkes and I don't know what we got left. There there's they stuck in their box magic eight balls. Anybody see the, the, the those crazy magic eight balls? I was like, I showed one of those to my 20 year old son yesterday, and he's like, "Why would they do that? <laughs> what a waste of money!" Oh well, never question a marketer, right? Anything else? I'll be here all day today, and I'll be here all day tomorrow. I probably won't be here Sunday, but I will be here today and tomorrow. And I'm just I I become an attendee now, like you are, so. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Bye.
sitting on my desk right now, running up to people in the crowd. Uh, this guy is the best. Okay, so the things that I need to do that are problems, this is fine. And so that, so my, my primary work job, my primary job for every day is to do that. So, this is what it's going to be. Better for the, better for the body. <laughs> Yeah. 